Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arp Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find those Kickstarters in comics and all sorts of fun stuff. So I'm going to be doing things a little different as the year goes forward. Um, first, I would like to apologize for not doing a whole lot of episodes. I have a lot of reviews in the plans in the uh, future episodes to come. But uh, as you know, it was Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And uh, I chose that time to spend with my family because uh, making Kickstarter notes and whatnot for the show is, take, took up a lot of time and, uh, and I need to spend that time with my family and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I have a little bit of a big family, I've got five kids, and uh, so I spend as much time with them as I can because I've got a full-time job and all that fun stuff. So this little hobby thing's kind of got to take a back seat to that until it starts bringing in some money, but yeah, right, like that's going to happen. Anyway, enough of that. So, usually I do a show where I, I talk about the comics I've read and uh, tell you about that stuff, And uh, but this is a little different episode. This is the year in review episode. Welcome to it, and uh, I'm going to tell you all the cool stuff that I come across in 2021 and uh, let you know what's going on. So first off, uh, you're in review of Peter Pan the Vampire comics, which that's the comic book I make. That's why I, there is a Rent Arb Studios in the first place. So for the year 2021, I sold 80 comic books, 80 Peter Pan the Vampire comics. And uh, so that's uh, just a little bit over last year's 77. Not too bad. I mean, 80 in a year, that's not great, but I only did one convention this year, so... That's online sales and one convention combined. Not too bad, 80, you know, pandemic. Hopefully uh, things open back up. I could start doing better shows and uh, we'll see how it goes. I've already booked uh, Fan X Salt Lake Comic Con for uh, 2022 and uh, can't wait to be there for that. We'll see how that goes and uh, hopefully I get my next comic book done Man, I really got to set my priorities on this. That's why, for one thing, my show's going to change a little bit going forward because I am spending way too much time making Kickstarter notes for the episodes. And so I'm going to go to just a thing where I do uh, episodes of reviews. And once a month, I will do a Kickstarter highlight. So what? Th we'll see how that goes. And... Obviously, I will mention the Kickstarters that go hand-in-hand hand with the comics. So, say for example, uh, I do a review for White Ash. I am going to mention the White Ash Kickstarters that are going on at the exact, mo exact moment that I'm doing the review for the comic. That way, gives a little shout-out. And then, uh, if that Kickstarter is still going when I do the uh, Kickstarter episode for the month, which will be somewhere around the 16th of every month. Uh, I just like the 16th, and uh, so that's, if that uh, day falls out in a day I can do it, you know, basically middle of the month, whatever. That's a weird way of getting around to saying a simple thing, huh? So, yeah, I have sold 80 Peter Pan the Vampire comics this year, three more than last year. That brings me to a grand total of 854 Peter Pan the Vampire comics out there in the wild. And uh, I am currently at negative $670 in uh, earnings. Yeah, that's it. That's the word I'm looking for. So the reason why I say negative is because when I uh, spend some money on a Comic-Con table or the hotels that I have to stay at while I'm at a con, I count that as losses or expenses in my comic book. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and other things go into that too. Art supplies, uh, tripods, cameras, whatever. And uh, all that fun stuff. So whatever goes into making my comic books uh, goes into this. But it was kind of nice. Uh, I got a little revenue from uh, Redbubble. The, so the shirts and whatnot that I sell with rent narbs on them goes into uh, my earnings and all that fun stuff. And uh, also the Peter Pan the Vampire comics and the Rent Narb pins, all that, anything, it's great. 
even though I've probably bought the majority of those, whatever. So, if you are interested in finding these Peter Pan the Vampire comics that I mentioned, uh, you can go on to IndiePlanet.com and you can buy a hard copy of Peter Pan the Vampire 1, 2, and 3 for $4 each, or you can download the digital copies for free! So, uh, yeah, because, I don't know, the, down the digital downloads are a nice little thing out there, and uh, gets more eyes on the readers, and maybe you don't know Peter Pan the Vampire yet, so download the digital version for free, read it. If you like all three of them, that's cool. Send me a message saying you liked them. If you really, really liked them, go ahead and buy the hard copy, and uh, or message me if you want me to send you a signed copy of the hard copies. So that's another way to do it. So yeah, like I said, I print through... Uh, I print through Kablam, and uh, Kablam then turns around and they sell Peter Pan the Vampire on IndiePlanet.com. That's where you can find Peter Pan the Vampire, is at IndiePlanet.com, and search for Peter Pan the Vampire. Okay, enough of that about, about, enough about that. Now I'm going to tell you about, as you know, uh, I'm a collector of pins, so I'm going to tell you about my favorite pins that I got in 2021, this would be a top 10, but I don't think I bought 10 in the year. So uh, I will get on to it. And this just in order of uh, when I got them, because I don't know, that's just how I'm doing it. So this pin right here, oh yeah, look at that. Is it gonna focus? This one says, I love you a waffle lot. And it's two little waffles holding hands. I love it. It's a great pin. Uh, yeah. Cool little enamel pin. I got this guy from Wish.com. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So check it out. I love you a waffle lot. Now, these two pins right here, these came with a comic book that I kickstarted called For Goodness Sake. So this is this guy right here. He's Thatcher one of the main characters from uh, For Goodness Sake, and this is Rain, Thatcher and Rain. So Thatcher and Rain here came with an awesome comic book, and uh, yep, they were some of my favorite pins to get this year. I have not yet worn them. Uh, I currently am in a year where I could go to church again, so I'm going to be wearing a different pin in my tie every Sunday that I go to church. And uh, as you know, if you follow me on the Twitters or the Facebook, uh, I post every Sunday the pins I'm wearing. And also, since my boys have gotten into collecting pins, I post a picture of my boys wearing their pins. So, cool. Thatcher and Rain from For Goodness Sake. Check those out. Really good book. Uh, I will be doing a review for the third book of uh, For Goodness Sake. And yes, it was an amazing read. Loved it. Now, this is another set that I got from Kickstarter. This was a set of four from the comic book Hack Slash. Hack Slash and uh, the Omnibus was on Kickstarter a little while ago. It was an awesome read. So many good stories in that Hack Slash. And uh, yeah, here is the main character from Hack Slash. Oh man, I, I'm blanking on the name. Hack Slash. Oh man. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Hack Slash. This is her uh, cohort. Oh my gosh. I think his name is Vlad. He's a Frankenstein ish kind of dude who I think he only wears the, ga the mask to hide how ugly his face is. And then there's also a bat with nails in it. And this says, I think it has words on it, but it, it says kiss it on the bat. So that, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's my Hack Slash set. If you have not read Hack Slash, I highly recommend it. Cassie, Cassie Hack. So Cassie is from Hack Slash. And, uh, yeah, it's an awesome read. I, that omnibus, it cracked me up. 
Yeah, it was so good. A uh, lot of different stories. Even Chucky showed up in it. Uh, Chucky the doll, as you may know. And uh, so, yeah, very entertaining stuff. And uh, good read. Good pins. I mean, gosh dang, these are some really cool detailed pins. And I just dropped one. Okay, now, here's another pin. Wow, this has been a long year as I see this pin. This is a pin, as you may know, from uh, Disney's Bell. This is the rose from Beasts. Uh, well, it is a stained glass window version of the rose from, from Beasts Curse. And uh, the reason why this pin is special to me is because my daughter bought this one for me to wear at her wedding that was this May. And wow, yeah, it's hard to believe that that happened this year. And it's been a crazy full year. A lot of things going on. And yeah, I have a married daughter. How crazy is that? So my daughter bought me this one to wear in my blue tie for the wedding. And I love it. It's going to be one of my favorites forever because it's very special. It has special meaning to me now. And here are two that I got from Salt Lake's Fan X Comic Con. This one is a Jack Skellington with a Sally in the background. Very hard to see if you're not really looking at it, but it's there. And this one also glows in the dark. I did not know that until I actually had it sitting on the, on the uh, dresser top gathering. It collected tons of light and then started glowing as the light was off. But yeah, that's a really cool one. It's a big boy too. Yeah, as you can see, based from size here, he is definitely a little bit bigger than usual. So that's my Jack Skellington one that I picked up at uh, FanX Salt Lake Comic Con. Here's another one I picked up at FanX Salt Lake Comic Con. This is Maui from Moana with his big old hook. I am a huge fan of Maui, as you know, because uh, I lived in Hawaii for a little while and... I also have Maui as a character in my Peter Pan the Vampire comics. So Maui is Peter Pan's best friend and one of the main people in uh, the Lost Boys group. Oh, and I dropped this one. Okay, this one here is just a random sun and moon with a face that I picked up at uh, Wish.com also. and. Uh, the moon and the sun with a face has a special connection with me because I, I, I used to draw these in high school, sun and moons together. And uh, so to me, that symbolizes me as the moon and my wife as the sun. And anytime I see one of these, I think of back to when uh, I met my wife in the 90s and started dating her and working with her at a little convenience store. So that's the end of the best pins of 2021 that I got. Now I'm going to move on to my favorite things that I watched in 2021. Starting with number 10 was Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi was amazing. Uh, yeah, it was it was crazy good. I loved the way they did the Kung Fu in it and the magic and the, and the other realm that they went to. Even dragons. I'm not really a big fan of dragons, but they pulled off the dragon thing for me and it was awesome. The kung fu in it was amazing, and obviously the scaffolding fight on the side of the building. I mean, you can't have a kung fu movie without a scaffolding fight. It's kind of one of my rules. I don't believe that it's a kung fu movie if you don't have a scaffolding fight in it. Another favorite thing I watched in 2021 was Stargirl Season 1. So, yeah, I'm currently watching Season 2 right now, but uh, yeah, the way I work this list is if I didn't watch it, in that year then I'm not going to mention it so but Stargirl it was new to me in 2021 and I watched it in 2021 and number eight on my list is Picard Picard uh, season one it was amazing and I can't wait to see season two so good uh, Patrick Stewart he's amazing um, I pretty much I'll watch anything he does it's it's awesome and uh, so Picard season one I watched it through the disc system of Netflix, and uh, so I 
I'd watch one disc, have to watch it, and then send it away and wait for the other one. That's fun. Another thing that I watched this year in 2021 was Cobra Kai seasons one and two and three. Uh, I did we just I just barely finished up season four, and uh, so I'll have to mention that next year. So Cobra Kai seasons one, two, and three. It was new to me, but man, it was amazing, and I loved it. And pr I'm pretty sure I'm going to chase me down uh, a Cobra Kai shirt. And an Eagle, Eagle Fang shirt, maybe even a Miyagi-Do. That would be so cool. And, uh, yeah. Love that show. And, uh, really love the next season. WandaVision. Wow, it's hard to believe that was this year, 2021. But WandaVision was an amazing show. Uh, yeah. Crazy. So good. Um, and number five on my list was Outlander. Seasons 5 and 6, um, we watched those. That's a show that I actually get my wife to watch with me. We love it. We can't wait till the next season. I think it's not going to drop until March, though. So, The Outlander, Seasons 5 and 6, that was my number 5. Number 4 was the Suicide Squad movie by James Gunn. It was crazy good. Yeah. Um, I love what they did with it. Uh, King Shark was amazing in it. Peacekeeper, the whole show, just crazy, so good. Polka Dot Man, I mean, crazy. So Suicide Squad, number four. Number three on my list was Hawkeye. Gosh dang, I, I really love Matt Fraction's run on Hawkeye, and it was amazing to see Matt Fraction's name in the credits on that as well, and the storyline very closely done to the same thing. The car chase scene was amazing, and... Uh, yeah, so Hawkeye, and that's another shirt I want. I want to get me a Trust a Bro uh, moving company shirt. That would be so cool. Especially, I love the shirts that nobody knows what it is, unless you know, you know. So that's one of those shirts that I could wear the Trust a Bro moving company shirt to work, and unless people know what Hawkeye is, it's, it's my own little secret. Now, number two on my list was Invincible. Man. That was this year, too? It was a crazy long year, huh? So Invincible, man, waited 10 years to finally see it on screen, and it was perfect. I loved it, and I uh, have no complaints about it at all. The casting was awesome. The animation style was great. Can't wait till we see some more Invincible. And number one on my list, Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh my gosh. Uh, I love all this Marvel phase where... Uh, they're dealing with multiverses and other realms and all that fun stuff. So, geez, so good. I uh, cannot wait until uh, until I can see the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Man, I'm excited for that. And that is the top 10 things I watched this year. Loved it. Now, the top 10 comics I read this year. I am, and rather than just talk about them, I am actually going to show you my top 10 comics that I read for 2021. So number 10 on my list is, let me get the glare off of it, Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. Uh, these are two different comic books that were on Kickstarter and they got collaborative, collaborative, whatever, emailed back and forth to each other and said, hey man, let's team up. Well, our stories are similar even though mine's taking place current, yours is taking place in 1938 so or 32 I think it was more accurate uh, so they're like let's see what happens if we do some time travel and some meeting up and some awesomeness anyway so yeah the first volume was done by the Miskatonic High team and the second was done by the uh, Lovecraft PI team oh, got the glare on that one so it was really cool. I love the different writing styles and art styles. They did well together. And when the trade came out, I backed it and bought it. So I also have that one because it came with some extra story along with it. And But when I read that one, I will give you a review of that. So that was number 10 on my list. Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. 
Number nine on my list is Goth Ghost Girl, number three. Goth Ghost Girl, number three, uh, the storyline really, really picked up and uh, it's getting exciting. The She's finally out to her friends. They know she's back as a ghost and uh, they helped save one of their biggest fans. Really cool. And got some payback on the uh, on the person that made her a ghost. So that was cool too. So Goth Ghost Girl number three. Great story. I loved it. It was everything I wanted it to be. I can't wait till the next Kickstarter. You know I'll be there, guys. So check out Goth Ghost Girl number three. That was my number nine. Number eight. Number eight is a whole three of them. So yeah, these all three of these were released in 2021. This is Planar Jane 1, 2, and 3. So Planar Jane 1, 2, and 3 is the story of a hit girl. So she goes to a high school career day kind of thing, and she wanders around seeing the different careers, and none of them really spark to her. Uh, she, she loves beating things up, beating people up, and uh, killing things, and so she's kind of a little Dexter at heart, and so she decides to become a, uh, a hitman for hire, but that's not something you would find at career day, is it? Anyway, she ends up, based on that career day, she ends up going and being a nurse with her best friend, who she protected as a little girl and are still friends with, but yeah, so technically, uh, you know, like Dexter, it's kind of one, the best place for him is, is as a cop, and personally, as far as the story goes, I think there's no better place for a, a hit person to be than as a nurse because it, you learn how to heal people and that's a quick way to learn how to injure people also. So Planer Jane, they're doing a really great job and they've got a cool art style where it's a it's black and white comic but it also has red in it so it's black, white, and red comic. That is my number eight on my top ten. Number seven on my top ten of 2021s was Deadbeats Volume 1. Deadbeats Volume 1 I found on Kickstarter. Well, so far every one of these is from Kickstarter. So, yeah, Deadbeats Volume 1 Kickstarter. It's an anthology. Many different writers and artists and creators are on this book. And it came together. It's basically um, like a, a shop that sells musical items. And each musical item has a horror story haunting involved with it. It was really cool. I loved it. That's why it made it to my number seven on my top ten. Number six on my top ten is Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. I also found this one on Kickstarter, but technically I didn't find it on Kickstarter so much as I found it because of the podcast. I listened to a Geek History Lesson podcast, and the creators of that make Jupiter Jet comic books. And so, yeah, this was an awesome read. Um, it takes place many, many, many years from now in a future or past. It's hard to tell with this story, but because uh, it's very, um, it's very 1930-ish feel to it, but it also takes place on Jupiter's moons and uh, stuff like that. So it's really cool. I loved it. Jupiter Jet. Awesome stuff. Um, awesome read. So check out Jupiter Jet. That was my number seven. This one is a two. Well, actually, it's a three. Technically, it's a three-year. So number five on my top ten list is By the Time I Get to Dallas. One and... Whoop. <laughs> One and two, let me see if I can get it to focus. Whoop, that, there it is again. I did the light. Okay, I have no idea what hand is what because it's reversed on the camera. Anyway, by the time I get to Dallas one and two, it's about a an outbreak, kind of. Um, and this is the Trinity Project. It's a, a prequel to, of sorts to it. So by the time I get to Dallas is about a pandemic where um, a good majority of the population uh, suddenly just stand, um, not, no, that's, 
a different comic standstill, uh, suddenly starts migrating to a specific spot, which happens to be just outside of Dallas. And uh, but they're, if they're driving, they drive to that spot. If they're walking, they're walking or they're boating, or if they're in a plane, they fly directly to that spot, which, ooh, I hope that doesn't sound very well for the uh, other people in the plane, but, so yeah, and then there's this one doctor whose girlfriend just up and says, I, she says she's going to Dallas, and he doesn't know why, so he starts chasing after her, trying to figure it out, maybe he'll find a cure for it in time to save his girlfriend, maybe not, we'll see how, where that goes. Um, I should be getting the next issue soon, or it, I don't know if I've already backed it or if it hasn't gone to Kickstarter yet. I feel like I have backed it though. So I'm just waiting on that one to arrive. Maybe it's already in my read pile. I don't know, my read pile is insanely huge. So that's one reason too, is if you're thinking, hey, I had a comment come out. Why, ha why isn't it on your uh, top 10? Well, that's because it's probably been in my read pile forever. Which also explains why sometimes there's an old comic in my lit in my uh, top ten like this. This is my number four. This is Paper Girls number four. Um, this has been in my read pile a long time. I know the book's been out for a good long time, but yeah. Sorry, I just barely read it this year, so this made it to my top ten. Um, I love the story, the way they're going with pa Paper Girls, and uh, I can't wait to see how it ends. And uh, I'm not sure there's too many issues left, but man, I really love this. And I hear it's going to be a series, but who knows if that, how that's going to go, because I remember hearing about Invincible becoming a series, and it took a whole 10 years for that to happen. So maybe in 10 years, I'll be talking about how awesome this show is. So Paper Girls it was a good read. Uh, it's a lot, got a lot of time travel, a lot of craziness going on, and... Uh, so cool. Love it. The art style is amazing. Number two... No, oh wait. I'm on number three. Number three on my list is Impossible Jones and Holly Day's team up. Holly Day's is kind of like a Harley Quinn character, and instead of following around a Joker, she used to follow around a guy named Krampus. Hence why she's Holly Day's, because she uh, celebrates the holidays, and such and so she's a villain and impossible jones is a hero but she's also a uh, thief that's posing as a hero she just got these magical powers stretchy she can form things as you can see that bat's probably not actually even in her hand she probably formed it from her hand and uh yeah it's a really cool book i love the play on how they're doing a thief posing as a hero just because they've seen her they think she's a hero and that, whatnot. So, yeah. And I love the way um, uh, Pulp 716 Comic Shop keeps hiring uh, cosplayers to do the cosplay of Impossible Jones. That's awesome. And that's an awesome read. I can't wait till I get more from them. I think I have a Impossible Jones team up with a Kid Lightning or Captain Lightning. And uh, it's either in my read box or it's on the way. So there will be more Impossible Jones, I'm sure, in my next year's top 20. T top 10. Next up in my top 10 is number two on my list. Number two on my list is Miskatonic High 8, 9, and 10. Yeah, these guys pump out some serious productivity during the year. These all came from Kickstarter. And... Yeah, so Miskatonic High, 8, 9, and 10. They did some really good stuff this year, uh, getting into it. I love love the homage cover. That looks like uh, they're doing an homage to the Fantastic Four. Did a really good job on that. Love the artwork in these. Love the storyline. I always back these with a co-worker, uh, me and Harlock. So every time in the thank you page it says... Uh, Harlock and GB of Rent and Arp Studios Comics. Miskatonic High, I love it. Can't wait for more to come out. And uh, obviously there is some more waiting in my read box, of the, in my read pile of them. And uh, so, number one 
on my favorite reads of 2021 was Bloodstained Volume 2. This has been out for a good while, but and I, I had been reading it on uh, on digitally, on, online somewhere. And uh, yeah, anytime this comes out on uh, in physical copy now, I'm going to be buying it. I love it. Love the cute little story. It's just about a girl that goes and gets in it. She has nowhere else to work, so she takes a job far away with a scientist uh, cleaning out his... Uh, beakers and uh, test tubes and stuff and basically it's just a slice of life comic it takes place in the uh, Sunstone universe because it's from uh, Linda Sedgwick um, so I'm, I'm loving the way it's going can't wait to read more that was volume 2 yeah and uh, I actually already has have read volume 3 but I haven't done a review for it so technically it's doesn't count for 2021 because I read it in 2022. Um, so you will be seeing a review for Volume 3 soon. Really good stuff. Loving it. And uh, that is the end of my top 10s comics list for 2021. Now I have got a couple comics in the mail, so I'm going to shoot off to Mailbox, Mailbox, Mailbox. What's in Rent Arms Mailbox? So, what have I got in my mailbox lately? Miskatonic High 13! So that's going in the read pile. And obviously I just showed you that I loved 8, 9, and 10. So yeah, I have an 11 and a 12 in my read pile somewhere. So, that's cool. Um, so Miskatonic High 13. Awesome, can't wait to see what's going on there. And I think they are going to be doing a Kickstarter for the trade volume soon. So I will have to get that as well, because, I, yeah, I I'm a little completionist when it comes to Miskatonic High. Love their stuff. Next up that I got from the mailbox is Amongst Us. Now, this is one that I found on Webtoons, and I'd been reading it, and uh, I'm kind of weird when it comes to Webtoons. Like, I'll start reading something, and then I'll forget it exists. And so that's one reason why I bought the physical. I prefer to have the physical so that I can actually read it. And if I want to go back to it, I can read it again and again. So amongst us, this is a cool one. It's just about some kids that are in band class and they just start hanging out. Really cool artwork. Love the way the story goes. And I even got a little post-it note that says, thanks, Gary. And it's not focusing, but you get the idea. Let's see. Yeah, thank you, Gary, from Shillin. So Shillin is the creator of Amongst Us. Love this story. So I can't wait to read that. That'll go in the read pile. And I'll give you a more in-depth review of that when I get to that. Oh, man. Speaking of the Sunstone universe, this is from Linda Sedgwick's husband, Stefan Sedgwick. This is fine print. And, uh, yeah, this takes place in the Sunstone universe as well. I don't, I can't even flip through the pages because it's not safe for work. And who knows who's watching this. Don't want to show some little kids something that they can't see. Next up that I got in my mailbox is Woodland Creatures number two. Oh man, I've been waiting a good while for this. So yeah, Woodland Creatures is a story about, uh, they're not really wares. They just kind of uh, share... Um, Mines with wolves or something. It's kind of kind of a different way to go about werewolves and stuff. Came with a print and an awesome bookmark. Woodland Creatures. Check that one out. And I've got a magnet. So, yeah, that's a cool magnet. I can stick to my uh, tin bulletin board. And it's got a little zipper puller dealio. So that's cool. A lot of cool stuff from the Woodland Creatures book. Can't wait to read that. Excited for that one. And last in my mailbox is Grim Space. Grim Space is one from Kickstarter, and uh, I think it's a Jack and the Beanstalk, Pinocchio kind of fairy tales, which is right up my alley because, you know, I'm making a Peter Pan the Vampire with Maui, Pele, and Jack Frost, and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's right up my alleyway right there. 
Grim Space. Jack and the Beanstalk in Outer Space. Sounds great. Can't wait to read that. You will be joining my uh, read pile soon, too. And, uh, yeah, I really got to get a handle on that. And now I'm on to uh, the Patreon part of them. So I have a Patreon page, and that's where I post all these videos. And basically, uh, nobody's backing me yet on Patreon. So I will just tell you, if you do back me, this is how I'm going to give you a shout out is I will put your name on a card and I will say thank you Gary Brantner for supporting me on Patreon. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Too much shadow. And I will hold up a placard uh, card that has your your social medias on it and I will say yeah, thank you for backing me on Patreon. But since I don't have that, all I have is an example to show you so far, whatever. Anyway, thank you for watching Rend Arc Studios Comics on YouTube. And I hope you had a really great 2021. And I hope you meet up with me again to watch my reviews next week. And uh, if you have a Kickstarter you think I should mention, get it to me before the week of the 16th. And I will check it out. Maybe I'll back you. A lot of cool stuff. Can't wait to see what you guys are going to kickstart this year. And uh, hopefully uh, I will be able to put out more videos on how I make Peter Pan the Vampire. And uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out my schedule. Got a, Still got a toddler at home, so I'm trying to work around that. And uh, all that fun stuff. So, yep. I think I've already said thank you for watching, so now it's time to turn it off.